Hey everyone, it's Dan Powell here, and uh, this is the January 13th, 2009 edition of Marty Mache, and that is an experimental puppetry workshop with Asa Nodelman, that's him right there, and me, Dan Powell. And what we do is we experiment with different ways of, uh, and materials of making puppets and puppet heads. Um, now, previous nights, and here are some of the results, we were doing a lot of paper mache, and we found some issues with that, particularly the pebbling you see on the skin here and here, and uh, which led to us sanding like SOBs and ending up with this. Which And the, the sanding combined with the materials used in the paper mache make for uh, very rough surfaces for painting and very uneven. So we're trying to avoid that. This week, we decided, hey, hey, let's do plaster molding because plaster molding is cool. And uh, so what we did is we made plasticine originals and then the idea was to cast those. Now, some thoughts going into this are we don't want to do undercuts. Undercuts are areas where the plaster, the liquid plaster we pour uh, for the first part of the mold, uh, we don't want any of that to be over top any of our original. Otherwise, we have to destroy the original or any subsequent castings in order to remove it. And that sort of de defeats the purpose. And we're going to do this in two parts by first doing the, uh, the face as one mold and then the back of the head is another mold. And uh, there's various things we do to uh, make it so the two molds will marry together well, so that anything we cast out of them will look nice like the original. This is all time-lapse photography, so this is 151 minutes of us monkeying around. First, we use the plasticine to do the originals. Now, Asa is already, look at him, he's already doing the fine detail. It's because he's a very experienced sculptor. Now, what he found just after this was that the uh, heat of his hands had made it, first of all, very easy to uh, to put in that fine detail, but it also made it very easy to lose that fine detail because uh, it was so so malleable at that point that uh, just any touching of it just ruined everything. So uh, he, in a moment, and uh, I subsequently put it in the fridge to uh, keep it cool. Funny, we needed the fridge. It's Winnipeg, and it's minus 45 with a wind chill outside. But there you go. Um, now, his approach was a bit different than mine. Uh, I'm sort of jumping ahead to when we do the molds. I'm making a neck so that I can put the neck right up against the edge of where we'll be pouring the plaster. That's so I have a nice easy way to get into the, uh, to put the material in. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what Ace is going to do. I think he's going to cry and say that I'm the better man, but we'll see how that goes at that point. Now I put a spike through so that I'd be able to suspend him, the, the head, halfway into the box so that he'd be sort of face deep into the, uh, the plaster that we're using. Now in a moment, you'll see we're going to use tin foil and plasticine to fill in the sort of the dead space inside of our our mold box. Now see, we do the see how much space it'll take. We seal up a hole and then we just pile in the tin foil and the plasticine. Plasticine can be reused. Tin foil can be reused or thrown out. Plaster is at the moment the most expensive material we had, and uh, so <laughs> we tried to save as much of that as possible. I also carved a little uh, something in there so that hopefully I'll, you know, I'll see it on the outside of the mold and pat myself on the back for being a smart guy. The plaster right here is uh, aimed for consistency between whole milk and ranch dressing. Closer to ranch dressing, I think, than we did would be good. And uh, right there, that's that's how you do it. So just to jump to sort of lessons learned here, uh, I don't think we should uh, pour directly onto the. Uh, the mold site or the originals. I think that'll be a problem later on. But use marbles in the plaster that just as it gets hard, and it'll suddenly get hard. Just so you know, 25 minutes in for us, it went from being chalky water to uh, being something solid that we had to deal with. Uh, and use marbles to make little indents so that when you cast the second half of the mold, uh, your your two molds will marry up nicely, and you don't have to fiddle around with that. Another thing is have lots of plasticine on hand that's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.